Hey YouTube, it's the test lead, and today's video is creating a runner in Postman. Runners are a way for you to automate your API testing process. They take a few minutes to set up, but you can run thousands of tests and get results in a matter of seconds once set up. This video will teach you how to create runners based on collections that you have created in Postman. The requisite for this video is downloading Postman and creating an account, both of which are free. So now let's jump into Postman. This is the web browser version of a free account. So start creating a request. Navigate to your workspace. And if you don't have one, just create a new one. It's very simple. And now start the setup. For each new request that you make, you're going to start by hitting the tab button to create a new tab. You can change the type of request that you make by selecting from the drop down to create a get, post, put, or any other option shown below. And then your actual request URL goes in the spacebar here. Get request retrieve data from an API. No information is modified from get calls. You'll be receiving information that already exists. In the URL, type in the following request https colon forward slash forward slash json placeholder dot type code dot com slash users. Now let's check our response. First of all, status code is 200, which means it was a successful request. And now let's check our response body. If you select pretty, you can see a well-formatted, easy to read version of the response body. The response should include a list of objects that include fields such as ID and name. Once again, this information already exists, it's retrieving it from the API call. Now we can start creating our collection. Go to the left tab, Collections, and then we have two ways to create a new collection. Either go to the new on top or create a collection on the bottom. For example, we'll go to Create a Collection. Next, we're going to name our collection. This collection is going to be called the Test Lead Collection. Next, let's navigate to the right and go to Documentation. Documentation is very important, especially if you're going to share the collection with other team members. So whenever you're creating something new, always try to document it as much as possible. As you can see, our collection is now listed in our collection list, the test lead collection. And now let's navigate to our first request call. Let's press the save button and save as. And then we'll save our request under our collection. And then we'll change the request name to request one to give it a meaningful name and to differentiate it from other requests that we have in our collection in the future. Now let's copy this URL and then use it for other requests. This request is going to be the same as the first one, but we're just going to change the request name once we save it and add it to our collection. Our collection can have a bunch of different get, post, put requests, but for our example here, we're going to have a bunch of get requests. We're going to do this a few more times and fill up our collection. And now if you click on our collection again, you'll see all three of our requests. And now with this new collection, you can share it to your team members, just choose a workspace, or via JSON. This is very important for reusability. It does make sense for your other team members to have to create a whole new collection for themselves, but you can just reuse your collection. You can also run your collection, edit it, add additional requests, add a folder to it, as well as much other things. Now let's create some tests for our request. Go to the test tab of the request. And then we'll go to the snippets. And we'll do a simple 200 test to make sure that the response code is 200 that is returned. We're going to save and run it. And as you can see, the test results are shown. We're going to then copy this and put this in the other two requests. That way there's tests for each of our requests. Please make sure you're saving the request after you're adding the code. 
or it will not pick it up when you run the runner. So don't forget, press the save button after adding the test. Go to your collection and then press run collection. Then run test collection. As you can see, all our results are shown. You have three passing tests. Now let's show an example of a test failing. So instead of searching for 200 as expected, we'll do 100 and it should make our test fail. We run a collection now. As you can see, we get one failure. Because it expects 100, we got 200 instead. And you can click through and see the results, where you can see which test passed and which test failed. Now let's turn the test back to 200 to expected value. That way it passes. And this time, we're going to run two iterations, which means each test is going to run two times. So we should get six results this time. Each test ran twice. And that's it. As you can see, a runner for a collection is very powerful. You can run a large amount of tests in a matter of seconds. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful at all, please like, share, and subscribe. If you want a video just like this, please click here. If you want other videos that I have, please click here. And hey, don't forget to learn something new today.